the topics I've covered at length here on the channel is cloud gaming servers. And I've gone over how to set that up a number of times, but I've never talked about the clients that I actually use to play games on my cloud gaming servers. So today we're gonna go over two different options, go over the pros and cons, and hopefully give you enough information to make the decision on which one is right for you. Our gamer rises from a fitful night's sleep, his hand eagerly reaching for his trusty Viper V570 gaming mouse to begin the day's hunt. Frags come easy thanks to the 12,000 DPI Avago laser sensor, allowing the gamer to score headshot after headshot on their hapless prey. With 13 programmable keys, along with addressable RGB, any gamer can customize the look and feel of the V570 to fit their needs. Strike fear into your next meal with a full lineup of gear from Viper Gaming by following the link down in the video description. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. I've done a number of videos on this channel on setting up your own self-hosted cloud gaming server, but I've never talked about how you actually connect to these servers and play games. So today we're gonna go over two different client options and the benefits and drawbacks of each system. Option number one is the client that I've used most often on this channel, and that is Parsec. Now, Parsec is a commercial service and has both free and paid tiers. The free tier, which is the only one I've ever used, allows for a single monitor to be broadcast up to 4K resolution and 60 Hertz with 8-bit color. There's also paid tiers of Parsec starting at about $9 per month or bulk plans if you have multiple users that need to sign on in your organization. This allows for additional features like multi-monitor streaming, 10-bit 444 color, virtual monitor support, full encryption, and full support for drawing tablets with pressure and tilt sensitivities. Now this being a commercial service, you will need to set up a Parsec account on their website and login and authentication are handled on their cloud. However, both the free and paid tiers of Parsec allow you to automatically forward your connection to your destination PC without having to configure firewall rules or any port forwarding. Whether you're connecting to a cloud gaming server or to your gaming desktop, Parsec does require you to have Windows 8.1 or higher for a host operating system. Windows 7 and Linux are not supported. What is supported is hardware MPEG encoding by all major graphics cards, that is Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. When it comes to client devices, Parsec actually has a pretty wide range of supported operating systems and hardware, from Windows 7 and Mac OS, to Chrome, Android, Linux, and even Raspberry Pi 3 and Pi 4s. Now, Parsec is a fantastic option for both gaming and remote desktop use, as you'll see in the demo a little bit later on in this video. But what if you don't want to tie yourself in to a commercial service or a cloud-hosted login? Lucky for you, there are a couple different open source options for both hosting and client connections. Let's start off by talking about Moonlight, which is an open source re-implementation of NVIDIA's GameStream client. It is completely free and open source. And in fact, you can download the source code yourself directly from GitHub or download a pre-compiled client from their website. Moonlight is designed to work with NVIDIA's GeForce Experience game stream server, but it will also work flawlessly with Sunshine game streaming. More on that in just a minute. Using GeForce Experience for a server requires you to have Windows 7 and above. However, I believe the most recent versions only support Windows 10 and above. When it comes to client support, your imagination is pretty much the only limit. We've got support for Windows 7 and above, Mac OS, Linux, Steam Link, Raspberry Pi 4, Android, Amazon Fire OS, Chrome OS, and homebrew versions for the PS Vita, Wii U, and LG's WebOS TV smart TVs. And lastly, what if you don't want to use GeForce Experience for your game stream hosting? Well, Sunshine is an open source re-implementation of that exact service. It is also free and open source and serves as a desktop streaming service. Sunshine is designed specifically to work with Moonlight as a client. However, it may support certain versions of GeForce Experience game streams as well. As a game host, it supports Windows 10 and Ubuntu. So Linux fans, you can actually stream your Linux desktop with hardware encoding over to handheld devices or low power devices like Windows users have enjoyed for years. As this is a self-hosted option, it works internally over LAN connections with no configuration required. However, if you want to use this remotely over the internet, you will need to set up both firewall forwarding and rules for remote connections. So there are the basics of everything you need to know, but let's go ahead and see how all of these work in action. 
Installing Parsec is completely straightforward on both the host and the client devices. Just visit parsec.app, create an account, and download the installer. Set up your hosting options on your gaming PC and connect via the Parsec client from a supported device. This is my remote video editing VM, allowing RET to remote into a dedicated VM with graphics acceleration to edit videos, rather than sending in hundreds of gigabytes of raw video files or converting everything into proxies. This virtual machine is running inside Proxmox and has eight cores and 16 threads of an Epic 7601 32 core CPU. It also has an NVIDIA Tesla M60 acting as a virtual GPU, but this exact same setup is possible on standard Windows gaming PCs or using consumer NVIDIA graphics cards by following this tutorial on my channel. We've been using this solution for the past eight months, and even working with the free version of Parsec, it's worked amazingly well. Latency is low enough to accurately make video cuts, but how is the latency when it comes to gaming? To test that out, let's fire up Cyberpunk 2077 and see how it holds up. So here we are inside Cyberpunk, and as you can see, it is overall a very smooth experience. I will say there is a slight amount of latency, and I mean ever so slight. According to Parsec, the encoding is happening inside of about 8 milliseconds, or about one half of a frame if we're at 60 FPS. I will say there's probably about a one to two frame hit from streaming this from the gaming PC over to my client. But overall, that's really not that bad when you consider I'm playing Cyberpunk on a PC that's not this PC. Every once in a while on the screen, I will see just a little bit of MPEG compression, but again, that's inherent to the fact that we are streaming and encoding this remotely on the gaming PC. Uh, but as you can see from my driving, this is still incredibly playable. And especially if you had a very low power device like a Raspberry Pi or say an Android handheld, this is a great experience. Speaking of Android handhelds, running the Parsec client in Windows is only one of your client options. I've also installed the Android client onto my Odin Pro Gaming handheld. It's powered by a Snapdragon 845 processor and sports a six inch 1080p display but even running the mobile hardware, it doesn't seem to hamper the gaming performance all that much. Responsiveness is still very snappy inside first-person shooters and racing games, though it is slightly more noticeable than running on the PC client. And as you can see here, I can connect to that same video editing machine. We will jump into Cyberpunk and pick up our game right where we left off. So as you can see, there's a little bit more MPEG noise going on, but overall it is still an incredibly smooth experience and honestly very, very responsive on mobile hardware, something equating to a four-year-old smartphone. Pretty impressive. Moving on to Sunshine and Moonlight as an open source alternative, the first step is to install Sunshine as a service, either in Windows or Linux as a host. I'm going to focus on Windows installation for today, but I may take a look at Linux game streaming in a future video. Installation is dead simple. Download Sunshine's latest release from their GitHub page and copy the contents of the zip file to a new directory on your C drive. Then just run the install service.bat file to get the service up and running. Sunshine runs in the background with no GUI interface on the PC. There is, however, an embedded web server for managing the service and its settings. To set up a new connection, open up a web browser and navigate to HTTPS, localhost, and then port 47990. Here you'll set up a username and password for managing the service and allow connections from Moonlight streaming clients. There are a ton of advanced options you can tweak in here, but the main thing we're concerned with right now is allowing a Moonlight client to connect. And we'll circle back to this page as soon as you have Moonlight set up and ready to go. On your client device, download and install Moonlight from their website or your platform's app store. Along the top menu bar, there is a monitor that bears a striking resemblance to my Craft Computing logo, but with a little plus sign in the middle. This is where you'll connect to a gaming host PC. Once you enter the IP or hostname of your gaming PC, you'll be given a PIN to authenticate the connection. This is a one-time requirement and will allow the host and client to talk to each other from now on with no additional steps needed. Back on the Sunshine webpage, click on the PIN tab and enter the PIN number generated by Moonlight. And that's it. You're ready to start gaming from your Moonlight client. And just to show you that it works, let's go ahead and fire up Cyberpunk 2077 once again. 
And here we are back on the streets of Night City. Uh, my first impression, just bouncing back and forth between Parsec and Moonlight is, there's actually less MPEG compression on the Moonlight client than there is on Parsec. Although I don't know if that's actually gonna translate once YouTube's encoders get a hold of this stream. But it is overall a much better looking image. I will say latency is slightly higher, maybe like one additional frame. Uh, I mentioned latency was as little as between eight and 16 milliseconds. We're probably between 16 and 24 milliseconds uh, in Moonlight. But again, if you consider you're playing on eight-year-old enterprise hardware, this is still a very, very impressive result and would probably only be improved by playing on a full desktop gaming PC. Now, while the latency is slightly higher, there are actually a ton of different options inside both Moonlight and Sunshine to tweak your settings more to your liking. And yeah, there's a bit more legwork required to get Moonlight and Sunshine up and running, but there's still fantastic options for remotely accessing a PC for gaming or work applications, and again, are completely free and open source. Whereas Parsec is limited to 60 FPS on the free plan, Moonlight and Sunshine are actually capable of up to 120 frames per second on your remote client, so long as you have the bandwidth to support it. For that option, I would definitely recommend sticking with a local LAN and a wired connection for both your host and your client if you're even going to try to attempt this. But I found that even 1440p 60 FPS streams work great from a remote network, even over Wi-Fi. Moonlight also has quite a few more options for handling inputs as well, like emulating touchscreen inputs inside of Windows, swapping gamepad buttons to match Xbox controllers, or even swapping mouse scroll direction for you crazy Mac OS kids. Like Parsec, Moonlight also supports a wide variety of clients, including Android. So let's give Cyberpunk 2077 one last go round on the Odin Pro. All right, and last but not least, here is Cyberpunk running on the Odin Pro. Well streaming to the Odin Pro. So here is my view, and here is the full screen image. Uh, so you can see, it looks almost as good as the desktop client. Uh, I would actually put this on par with the Parsec uh, desktop client as far as MPEG compression, latency, etc. cetera goes. Um, really, I'm not seeing much of a difference here. Controls are very responsive. The color and the frame rate both look amazing. Honestly, this is not that difficult to control on a $200 Android handheld. And there you have it, two very different options for playing PC games streamed from high-end hardware or self-hosted cloud gaming servers to low-powered clients like this. Links to all the software will be down in the video description if you're interested in trying this out for yourself, as well as tutorials for setting up your own cloud gaming server. Now, so far, I've really only been able to show NVIDIA cards running in these servers, but I am going to be putting together an AMD-based system in the next week. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that one. And that's going to do it for me in today's video. Make sure to like this one if you liked it. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing for daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today is a collaboration between Ex Novo Brewing out of Portland and Old Standby Brewing out of Salem, Oregon. It is the Understudy Extra Special Bitter, otherwise known as an ESB, clocking in at 5.2%. So we are all Oregon here today. We've got Obviously Craft Computing, we've got Ex Novo, Old Standby Brewing, and my glass is from San Yam. Even when you get into your head that it's an ESB, which is like a an even more bitter brown ale, I still come up going, boy, that's really dry. <laughs> Definitely a different style beer than I've been having as of late. Um, I love ESBs, but ESBs I usually reserve for, you know what, I'm gonna have this paired with a nice steak or a burger or, or even a salad. Uh, very rarely will I crave an ESB at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday, let alone 11.20 a.m. on a Tuesday. It's very malty, again, very dry, but 
it's got some really good flavors in there. I also can't help but feel I need a brat sitting right beside this to really thoroughly enjoy it. It's not bad as a standalone beer, but this one's best enjoyed with a meal.